creates where we create beautiful things. Um, so today, or rather a few weeks ago, because it's been a couple of weeks now, but I'm going to show you how to make things out of recycled plastic bags. Um, this corset in particular is recycled plastic bags, and then I went for my stash, so it's got little pieces of t-shirts on the side for extra stretch and elastic on the back. Um, and it's fully lined with more stash fabric um, because you're gonna have to line this if you don't want, plastic is not good feeling against your skin, but uh, this is the corset and it's made out of recycled um, plastic bags. I'm also going to show you how to of course, make fabric out of plastic bags, right? Because it's not fabric. And how to make a purse. So, let's get to it. So the first thing that I did was put a zipper on my mannequin. Um, this is a separating zipper. It's really important that you use a separating zipper. Otherwise, you won't be able to open and close your corset. Um, and I just put... Um, tape where I wanted all the lines to be and I have my elastic out on the side so I'm going to show a little bit of the draping process but honestly I want to skip right through that and make this a little bit quick because I do have the sewing pattern um, available for y'all for a free download and it's pretty size inclusive because it's just the front some of y'all with smaller sizes may have to um, just take an inch or two off of the um, t-shirt side panel part but other than that it's just a matter of putting elastic um, around your back and pulling it tight but not too tight like feeling what's comfortable for you and then cutting out the elastic and sewing it all together um, so yeah I'm gonna try to breeze through the pattern making here all right so I did this a little bit out of order um, I was supposed to do the purse first but I found the um, the sewing pattern for the corset first. So I haven't shown y'all how to fuse the bags together, but right now I'm just gonna show you placement on the um, on the bags using them like as a fabric, like a um, leather or pleather fabric. I'm trying to get the um, exciting part in, or the text area in the patterns just because I think it'll look better. I ended up having to do a couple more uh, pieces than I thought just to make it the style and design that I wanted. But you can see I'm just taking those two pattern pieces and placing them how I feel like. And I had to run and get a pencil to do that with. Um, yeah, I'm going to speed through after this because it's just going to be tracing the pattern, then cutting it out, and then um, doing a quilting sewing technique over it because these plastics don't always stay fused together so you're going to want to quilt it and I actually suggest you quilt it before you cut the pattern pieces out which is not what I'm doing but it was a trial and error thing where now I'm, it's going to be what I do. Oh and one more thing um, I'm just taking them each and tracing them and cutting them out two times one facing with the pattern piece text facing up and then one with it facing down so that I will have, um, you know, the instructions say cut two. Usually with fabric, you just fold the fabric or whatever, or have two pieces that fold over, but um, that's a little harder to do when you're trying to take out certain pieces of text. So I just cut more pieces. Here's my lining. I made sure to um, serge all the edges because this is actually fabric for my stash and it could fray. And here is the main pieces of my design. You can see that the two sides are um, just from a t-shirt, also from my stash. Um, and you want to sew the fronts to the sides, both the plastic pieces, um, together, but don't sew them down the center yet. And then baste the um, plastic piece to the lining piece uh, around the center or along the center front line, so that'll be easier to sew the zipper on, which I'm zooming in awkwardly on right now. Cool. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut the zipper to the desired length, which it might seem like is a little short, but actually keeping in mind seam allowance is fine. Um, and I did a like one tick of the um, zipper part longer so that I can sew that down at the end. And now I'm just clipping it to the um, 
fabric and plastic right sides together um, just along that zip line and I'm going to be using a zipper foot and just going carefully along that line and then I'm going to top stitch it. I'm going to do this on both sides for both fabrics. going to be tucking it kind of like it's a burrito um, you know right sides together but I'm also folding it in the zipper so that it's kind of like inside out this is a common technique with um, lingerie I'll show you a better view of it hopefully soon and then what you're gonna want to do is zigzag stitch the stitch it and then top stitch it um, and yeah, that's pretty much it until you get to the top and bottom, which is going to be a little bit more complicated. Sorry, first we're going to cut just a little bit of the plastic bag off. Um, that way we can get into the lining and make the lining longer than the plastic bag because we're going to fold over the plastic bag just a little bit, but we're going to double up the lining so that it covers the plastic so that our skin doesn't touch the plastic. Um, I'm, I have both sides of this to show you, but. Um, I know I'm making it sound complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. And uh, yeah, the most complicated part is just trying to get the um, plastic to fit around. Oh, and all the snipping. Um, for that one, I don't have very much specific things to tell you except to um, kind of um, just feel it out. Uh, the sewing pattern shouldn't have that big of a seam allowance for the... Um, for the knit part, I fixed that. Um, so yeah, just do it by feel. There we go, I'm cutting up the um, plastic and now folding it over and under. So I'm kind of folding it in on itself just to uh, protect the skin there.
so now we have it on the mannequin the front is all done and I'm just trying to measure out um, how to do the elastic so I'm going to hold it a little bit tight or wrap it a little bit tight um, again you don't want too tight you don't want to be uncomfortable so if you're testing this on yourself you might need to get a friend to help you but you don't want to be too uncomfortable you want to be able to wear stuff under it but you don't want to be so loose that doesn't even hold up the corset um, so this one this part is just try trial and error and that's just the way it is um, with this pattern so I put a pin in how long I wanted it and I figured that I could actually get away with chopping the elastic in half and using both halves um, for one big piece and that way I could use up all the leftover elastic that I had and then I also decided to do a um, red lace elastic around the center of the middle uh, depending on how thick your elastic is you can play with how many pieces you need but I wanted to stack it up um, in terms of three just to have it fitting right. You don't want all that tension on one piece of elastic. You want the top and bottom to have something holding it up. Um, I don't have it on video here, but I wanted to give one quick note about the elastic before we um, switch to the purse. And that is that when you're sewing it, of course, right sides together, all that, but you want to zigzag stitch it to the t-shirt pieces. And then you want to um, use a stretch stitch as a top stitch as well, just to really hold it in there. to make the um, fabric out of plastic. What you want to do is have a sheet of um, paper, not regular paper, sorry, um, uh, parchment paper, and then you have your two first layers of plastic, and then you put another sheet of the parchment paper on, and you iron it on low, like your lowest setting, and just kind of hold it there until it shrinks and fuses. Um, the first time you do this, or the first couple of times, you might melt through the plastic. Um, you, it's kind of a learning experience. It's kind of something that you learn from doing, not watching. But eventually I did get it right. Um, if you want to turn up the heat, like I did here, and just go a little faster, uh, that could also work. Just um, practice a couple times and see what works for you. Now you want to do this about five to seven times with the um, things you want shown the least, like if you don't want words showing on the plastic bags, and you put those at the first couple of layers that you do. Um, because the more layers you build up, the more wrinkly the inside gets. Um, which shouldn't matter in the end result unless you put it on backwards, but um, yeah, you can see it shrunk there a little. Um, but yeah, you want the most visually desirable pieces at the top or last uh, in what you're doing.
So here I kind of skip to my last um, piece. Again, you should have like five to seven pieces, but I'm just making it fast and skipping to the last one. Um, so I'm being really careful not to burn this last layer, but I did want the words thank you slash gracias, I think. Some of them are just saying thank you and some of them say thank you and then the next line is gracias and then the next line is thank you. I thought that was really neat looking, so I'm trying to um, merge it so that that is on the top or the most visible layer. You see here, kid? You gotta just go for it. Don't think about what comes after or what came before. You just gotta bend your knees, take a deep breath, and jump. And you might think, what if I fall? Well, what if you don't? What if you fly? pattern pieces cut out um, there's the top purse edges so it has two of those um, I'm gonna do like a quilting pattern through this I believe just to keep it all stable because some of it like the plastic didn't melt right and is coming off um, and then I have the is this the bottom edge yeah it's the bottom edge of the purse right here and the other side you can see it's croaker bag so the whites don't really match but I feel like that's okay it's like at least close enough it's kind of a grayish but it's better than nothing and it's better than having it completely not match so um, there's that and then I have this other side to do and then I have to figure out how to get this long strap um, a problem that I'm running into though is that I'm running out of bags which is good in a recycling sense, but bad in the sense that my, I might not have enough to do this project. My family doesn't really use plastic bags that much, so I might have to improvise. Um, maybe use some of these if I could figure out how to melt them. Could be cool for a strap. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and see if I can melt together one more piece for the other side of this. And then I'm going to look into my fabric stash, see if there's anything I want to use for the lining. Alright, for the straps, I really want them to buckle in. So instead of doing this whole long piece, I'm going to do two small pieces with this same width. Um, and that will be sewn into the sides of the purse for now. And then... Later, I'm going to figure out what I want to do for this. I'm thinking the center minus a few inches will be uh, this texture and then the rest will be a chain. So I did decide to fold these into thirds. I just thought it would look better because it'll end up looking like this and you'll see the edges. Um, those can easily be sewn in though. I mean, it's all kind of the same. Uh, so here's everything except for the straps I have on this table. So I'm going to move those aside and work on the lining. All right, so I have all these cut out. The first thing I'm going to do is just fold over the pocket a couple of times to um, seal that or to, you know, have that um, nice and sealed. And then I'm also going to iron over each edge and sew it to one of these.
surged and um, on pieces now just because I surge them doesn't mean that you have to you have to do something to keep them from fraying but if you want to do a zigzag stitch around them or a complicated seam for some reason I wouldn't recommend that one um, just if you don't have a serger use a zigzag stitch um, just something to keep them in place all right so now I have this zipper which might be a little small but it's what I have I took it off of something else I don't remember what let's see where top edge is I think that that's it these are okay <laughs> this is me working without instructions uh these are all a little big. How did that happen? Well, I'm not doing this again, so I guess this is top edge. All right, putting those away, putting these out here. Uh, this is the top of my quilting. This is the top of my lining. And so what we want to do is have this be folded out like that um, so we want this here and we want this to fold out um, like this so that this is on top when it comes to the lining so I think what we want to do is We want the lining to be here, right? I'm just gonna put a quick pin there to mark it. I want the line to be there. And we want this guy to be here. And we're gonna sew along this edge so that when we unfold it, it should come out like this. The only problem with that is that I cannot see what I'm doing. And I think, no, okay. I don't know where exactly to put the zipper, but I think I want it so that you can't see, or you can't, well, whatever. The zipper is the wrong size. I'm just gonna put the teeth, or the um, top bit up against the side and we'll see how that goes um maybe i should unzip this until we get to the end that might be easier uh yeah we're just gonna do this like a sandwich which feels risky because i can't see what i'm doing but i'll put in a zipper foot and just kind of feel what i'm doing Ooh, that went through the teeth most definitely, okay. Flip this over like this. And I know I should really be using clips if I'm gonna be piercing holes in this, but I've already messed it up and I don't feel like fixing it. I don't actually like using clips very much. I know everyone's crazy about them, but for me, I don't know, I find them bulkier and more in the way than pins are, you know? So force of habit, I just kind of went along through and pierced holes in the top of this. Hopefully it still looks nice when I'm done with it. Oh, okay, so it'll fold out. And I'll show you when I'm done. Yeah, when I get to about here, I'm gonna backstitch and zip this up a little so that's out of the way. But uh, first things first, I'm going to pop a zipper foot into my machine and maybe a, um, well, the Universal Needle hasn't let me down yet. Let's see how it does with this. Might be a 
disaster, but we'll see. that um, the lining was a little longer than the plastic. I think the plastic in the bag itself shrunk because instead of um, quilting all the fabric first and then um, cutting out the pattern, I cut out the pattern and then quilted it. So I'm not sure if I show this on camera or not, but I'm just going to go through with the serger and um, take off a little bit of the lining. But Right then I was just top stitching everything together. And now what I'm doing is I'm assembling the um, piece that's kind of like a line around the um, bottom of the circle. And to do that, I'm just taking the um, plastic and lining pieces separate and matching them to the edges and sewing them like that. Um, not forgetting the little rings which I put on opposite ends of the zipper so that um, kind of balances the bag out. Uh, yeah, as for the um, lining and the regular piece, I probably should have done them a little bit more separate. You'll see what I mean in just a little bit, but um, this is how I put them together. Thing. Um, I sewed the, these sides together and then I did a zigzag stitch to hold. This looked like it was a little bit loose so I did a zigzag stitch over to the side of it and then I did a top stitch just to really hold these guys in place because this is going to be where you have the um, strap. So right, the next steps are right, sides together for the lining for these and then I'll move on to the outside and I guess after that I'll be done all right so I have this all pinned around uh, um, I'm going to sew this bit of leather first and then I'm gonna see what I can do about the lining because I accidentally sewed it here and here when I really really shouldn't have but there's no going back on that because there was a lot of sewing 
involved in that. And the more sewing you do on this kind of project, the more you pierce the plastic. So I'd run the risk of breaking the plastic in the most vulnerable places. So I think there's going to be some hand stitching involved for me. But I'm going to sew this and then we'll see. Okay, it's a little domed and there are places where I don't love where it's sitting, but uh, that's the best that could be done. I did a little zigzag stitch around the edges just because when I flipped it, there were some teething, so I really wanted to make sure that it worked well. And so now I think I'm going to do the lining, but I'm going to stop each time with a couple inches here and here, and then just hand stitch it after I flip it inside out. I think that that's the easiest way to do it. Um, so first is the lining with the pocket, and what I want to make sure is direction-wise, the pocket lines up with the zipper. That's very important. Um, all right, I'm going to pin this and then sew it and come back when I have both the round pieces on and I'm ready to flip it inside out. just have to pull it through because I still haven't sewn this part yet. Um, I just have to pull it through, pin it, start in the middle because again there's going to be gathering this just doesn't fit right. But now I just pin it and sew it up to a couple inches from here on either side. Here's what it looks like from the inside. You can see that there are parts I still need to finish sewing, but I think I'm going to do that last because I don't know exactly what would be involved with sticking this piece on, oh, this piece on, um, and I want to be able to get in and out of those crevices. So yeah, so far I have one down, one to go. And I have to be really careful about this one. I did this on the wrong side, so that's going to be even harder. But I really want this pocket to be facing up to the top. So the question is, how do I do that? And I think I'm going to pull this out again. this against this. No. Yeah, this against this. Wait. So I'm lining them up with the dogs um, helping because it's a directional pattern. So if I just line up one head of the dog with the other head, they happen to do a good, even, straight lineup. Pop this out a little bit more. Okay. 
but I'm just going to do it the same way I did it last time with sewing it on the top, leaving a gap and then sewing the bottom. So at least this should be even. Okay, see, created a freak dog, perfect. Now, the other side, I'm gonna shove everything back into the purse. <sighs> this plastic might get a little warm from all this, I don't know. Everything goes. Including this. And the bottom of the purse I've deduced is this dog right here. So I'm just going to line that up with the bottom of the circle. Um, I measured it for the pocket, of course. And I'm going to pin these things together. I sewed it in a way I shouldn't have earlier, but that's okay. This is my first purse in a long time. I've done a couple of other ones that were just kind of basic and they were disasters. Um, purses are just not, it's not the same as sewing outfits and, or sewing clothing, and I always screw up purses. They're just, they're really hard. Now I've done purses without sewing, um, if y'all have seen that tutorial, and that was fun. I don't think my sewing machine can get in here, but the less I have to hand sew, the better. Kind of a crevasse. Okay. I know it looks like nothing. Actually, it looks worse than nothing. Flip this again, and I should be able to sew. All right, on to the final piece of fabric. So what I'm going to do is, I left these open on purpose. I know it looks bad from the inside, but I really want to finish that after everything just to make sure I can flip it inside out. So I'm going to flip this. One more time. I know the plastic is probably getting tired, but that's a look, so I'm good with that. So if you flip it inside out, you get this. But I am going to dig this out of this big hole I left. doesn't want to get dug out. Do my best. Maybe I have to flip the entire thing. Yep. Okay. Got it out of the hole now. Um, I don't know what's going to be done about this. This might be another hand stitching situation. I sewed it a little too close to the thing and I'm worried about the metal ring. Actually, if I push it to the side, it could just reinforce everything. But then I'd have to pin it. Oh, I know. Yeah, sorry, I'm talking about things y'all cannot see. It's clipped. Excellent. All right. Digging this out, and then just trim it. No one will ever know. Okay, I 
I want thank you to be facing like that. including this thing but I'm gonna be careful when I get here and here I might even just take it up to here backstitch start here backstitch like yeah okay. let's try to get this plastic mess sorted out through the hole I left. Oh, oh, okay. <sighs> well, now this is inside out. bothered to top stitch but it's a little late for that. I'm just gonna pull and voila we have a bag of garbage. And he's actually pretty cute. Now I have to flip it inside out one more time to finish up the inside edges and hand stitch that and I will be doing that off camera because it's boring and I want to watch something while I do it. So here I am making the straps. Um, I already sewed about three layers of um, those plastic rings together and by sewed I mean um, I ironed them and now I'm just going to be putting these clips. Um, I actually bought them from the Dollar Tree. They're dog leashes. I'm just going to cut the clippy part off and use those um, and save the webbing for later. Um, and what I'm going to do to attach them is I'm just going to cut the um, plastic, make a slit of the plastic. Um, I'm going to put the metal piece in. And then I'm going to take some more plastic, put it, like put tiny slices of plastic along each of the edges. Um, so front and back. And I don't know why I'm walking off right now, but okay. And um, then iron that all together so it'll be like I'm soldering it. And I know that that sounds really flimsy, but it's actually 
really, really strong. Like, I tried to pull it apart shortly after this and I couldn't do it. Um, so I'm going to do that. And this is the um, handle piece. And I'm going to make the other handle piece. And then to attach those, um, it's just soldering again so that I have six on six little holes on each side and then I'm going to be attaching the handle which I'll show you later I'm getting a little ahead of myself but yeah I'm just using the iron just like we did with the plastic bags um, except I think I'm putting on a, on a higher setting to do this and then wait for it to cool and then pull it up sew them right sides together and for this this is the right side even though it has writing I actually think that that's pretty cool and then this one either one can be the right side so I'm just gonna place it like that sew along the edge and then I have these flaps that will attach to the chain but pretty quick just flip that right side out and now I'm going to top stitch here and here and then almost done All right, we are in the home stretch I think I don't know how I feel about these plastic things like they're sturdy so if I were to do something else with them it would be wrapping around them but like they're very obviously plastic but so is this I don't know but I finished stitching this into a strap and now I'm just gonna hold it how I want it and I think I want this part on the outside the plain part so I'm just going to take this on the end strap and I specifically didn't cut this or anything on this last one I left them plain just to um, you know secure that Do that and sew it down like this. Actually, I think what I'm going to do is cut this in half to make it easier to fit. Although, I hope that doesn't change the sturdiness of this. I don't think it will. Now, I'm just going to thread this through, folding it over more than once, just like several times, and top stitch above this so that I catch this in here like this.
Okay, that is the end of the video, everyone. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. A uh, couple of quick notes. The charms I did, I do hope to have a tutorial on that eventually, but I want to do a tutorial the right way. What I did this time was recycle HTPE um, plastic, and I don't think I'll be doing that again. I've been experimenting with bioplastic. Basically, I'm trying to find a way to make purse charms to show y'all how to do that. Um, and... Oh, I also have a sewing pattern for the corset that I will be putting in this video um, a little bit after I go, I um, upload, just because I want to put a link to this video in the sewing pattern, um, so that makes sense and is cohesive, um, but that will be either on a Google Drive or on my website for free, I'm not sure yet. Um, the main thing from that is unless you're like an extra small or something you shouldn't have to um, deviate from the pattern at all it should just be measuring the elastic around your back um, which I show in the video and it's super simple so um, yeah that should be it so um, I hope you enjoyed the video please like and subscribe and share of course and as always happy sewing